What's going on everyone, Jackie from Half Chrome, and this is the new Pabo 20 from Beta FPV, and it is a blast to fly. It's like the original Pavo Pico, but better in pretty much every single way. So the thing about this that I really love is the crystal clear video feed that you're getting in your goggles, right? Because it's the DJI 03 unit, you're getting the absolute best picture you can in your goggles. And it's recording a pretty darn good image as well. Pretty much the best one you can get without adding a camera to your drone and it'll even stabilize it for you electronically, or you could do it in post. You have a lot of options here with this Pavo 20. I've been very impressed with this tiny little quad. It's obviously a little bit larger. This is an original Pavo Pico that I have right here. Now this one has the walk snail system, and this guy here, the Pavo 20, has the DJI 03 on it. We went up to a slightly larger 90 millimeter wheelbase, and that allows it to have both bigger props and bigger motors. Uh, so we've got two inch props, and we're pushing these gem fan two blades, um, and we've got 1103-8500 kV motors. This new Pavo Pico flies so much better, and it's still stabilized with this DJI 03, if that's the unit that you get. The carbon fiber is upgraded. This frame is upgraded. This is absolutely a much better drone. Now, I took this air unit off of my Mobula 8 HD, and it's not going back. This is a better drone. So this is my Mobula 8 frame. Uh, looks like it's cracked a little bit. Didn't notice that. Anyway, it's just a tiny bit bigger. And no, that O3 unit is staying on this. This is just a blast to fly. I've flown this a handful of different ways. I've flown it indoors. I've flown it outdoors. Uh, slow cruising, fast flying. Um, I was doing some chasing with this thing, chasing some kids on a golf cart. Absolute blast. I'm a big fan of this new and upgraded Pavo 20. Way better than the Pavo Pico. The Pavo Pico was just kind of overweight and underpowered. We've fixed those issues with the Pavo 20. It's still less than 250 grams. So actually, let's take a look at it on the scale. So I've got a 3S 450 on here. They recommend 450 to 650. And with the battery, it's checking in at about 130 grams. If I take the battery off, it looks like it's 89 grams. And just for comparison's sake, my Pavo Pico with a walk snail, which is a lighter than the air unit, is only 64 grams. And remember, the Pavo Pico is only going to fly on 2S. So you go up to a 3S battery, you're going to get a little bit more power and sometimes a tiny bit more flight time. But um, this is the way to go for sure. The mounting on this is actually upgraded as well. Um, we've got some thicker rubber dampeners and uh, it'll just kind of screw into this frame uh, where the threaded screw doesn't allow you to over tighten it. So, um, you know, it's just a better overall design. The all-in-one flight controller is also upgraded. It has more processing power, so it's gonna handle this video just a little bit better. Uh, plus, it's a 20 amp ESC with burst up to 25, which obviously you want more amperage when you're dealing with a bigger battery. This cage is redesigned, and you know, I had some issues kind of getting this air unit to kind of stay in place as I was getting in there, but once it's in place, it actually stays better than I thought. I kept falling out as I was preparing it but once you get all the screws and whatnot it's in there pretty darn good um, this camera does sit out just a little bit now you can see the frame in shot which I would have liked to have it out a little bit more but but I can absolutely crop it out in post and no one will ever know this little copper antenna here is my built-in ELRS antenna that is built into the flight controller and it is a serial based antenna not SPI that just means you're gonna get better range and you can flash it using the ELRS configurator you can see I did attach this LED light strip all the way around and it's pretty darn bright in fact it helped me find this guy. Uh, I did crash it uh, chasing uh, some kids around on a golf cart, my kids um, and my nieces and nephews, no worries. Um, 
and it fell into some deep brush. And uh, with this super bright LED, it was super easy to spot. So uh, definitely a bonus. I think that actually helped us locate it better than the beeper, right? So the I set the motors to beep, and you know that's not super loud. Plus, could heat up the SC, you know, if you got caught on some grass. But yeah, that LED strip, pretty darn nice. Uh, big fan. They, they come in different colors, red, I went with blue. Uh, I think I might take some of these, like the yellow one maybe, and add it to a different drone. Just really nice, and it plugs right in. They basically integrate it into the system. Another thing to note, right, it doesn't connect um, to your computer like most drones, right? I don't have a USB-C port. Uh, so I have to use this little adapter that came with it. I'm not sure why they opted for that system. They've been doing that on their last few drones. The Pico was like that as well. I guess it saves a tiny bit of weight, but you know what? I don't know. I don't know that that's super necessary um, when you're going up to these two inch motors. I guess every little gram counts. So there is that, but just kind of note, you're gonna wanna not lose this piece. Otherwise you're not gonna be able to connect it to your computer and use it with Betaflight. I put the LED here on a switch, which is kind of a nice little touch. Um, and BitFPV has been doing some pretty darn good things recently. They also put out this new Gemini ELRS uh, transmitter. And uh, basically the, the short version is you get a better signal. You get a more powerful signal, right? So you can, so if you've heard of diversity antennas, that's basically what we're doing, right? You're getting, you're sending out a diversity signal or two signals actually is maybe a better way to think about it. If you have a diversity receiver, you can put it into Gemini mode and get even better range. Now, if you don't have a diversity receiver on here, you basically can just kind of go with a better signal. So recently BitFPV has been putting out some pretty impressive little drones. I'm a big fan of some of the smaller things. So beta FPV is right up my alley. Now in the past, some of their stuff has been quite as reliable. I've had some pretty good luck with a lot of their more recent products. I would say this drone is really good for someone that's looking for a small, lightweight, sub 250 gram drone that you can do some Cinewhoop style slow cruising, but also pick up the pace. Uh, this guy is absolutely capable of doing some freestyle, whereas the original Pavo Pico was pretty much a dog. I like to think of this essentially as a mini Avada. Now it doesn't have the altitude hold that the Avada does, but gosh, it is basically the same camera. It's pretty darn impressive. I'm a big fan of this, and uh, this is absolutely one of the drones that I'm gonna grab off the shelf when I wanna do some flying, especially around people. And I'm never gonna have to worry about remote ID with this because it is less than 250 grams. Anyway, I hope this was helpful. If you're looking for one of these, check the link down below. It is an affiliate link and it helps support this channel. And if you're thinking about going pro, yeah, we've got plenty of part 107 information to help you study. Links down below as well. Good luck everyone and happy flying.